In this section we want to talk about new developments uh, with tooling in the wood industry and there have been a lot of changes over the last number of years. Um, one of the areas that uh, we've seen is, is improvements in the in carbide. Uh, cobalt is, is an element of that carbide tool. Um, cobalt is actually quite useful for lathe applications, wood lathe, where we're trying to control the heat. Um, so we're, we're playing around with that, uh, trying to improve uh, the quality of the, the cobalt and um, how, the, how it affects the, uh, uh, the heat resistance, the chemical resistance um, on uh, wood turning and um, wood machining. Other things that could be, could be adjusted would be uh, reformulation of the metals by adding in more nickel compounds or chromium compounds and they are there to um, help you with, with heat and chemical resistance. Um, these are all things that, would, that are good for green acidic woods. Um, so there's going to be some changes that are going to be coming down the pipe in the next five to ten years that we're going to see. There's always changes, there's always improvements in all of this product. Um, one of the ones that we see a lot of today and that is coatings applied to tooling and basically it's there to try to minimize uh, heat buildup and so on. Um, if you uh, see the Canadian, watch the Canadian Tire flyers or, or um, tool flyers, uh, you'll often see drill bits and rudder bits that are titanium coated. And basically it's there for heat resistance or for lubrication of some sort. So we have two different types of coatings. We have brazed on coatings and we've got diffusion coatings. Now brazed on coatings would be titanium nitrate or titanium carbide. It's applied over the carbide or high speed steel and it's used in softwood mills, uh, especially used a lot with cedar. Uh, for diffusion coatings, we're using titanium diboride, uh, brand name Borofuse. Uh, less friction, slippery, runs cooler. Um, it is an expensive process, but it does extend the life of that carbide tool up to two times longer. One of the ones that we're all quite familiar with, and that is rather than having dedicated cutting tools with carbide tip, uh, we're using turnover cutters and we're using that on our planers, our jointers, our shapers, our molders. There's not too many machines out there, even on our table saws, we're using turnover knives on our dado sets now. Um, there's not too many machines that we're not using the turnover cutters. So it's either, there's two different types, there's tur turnover cutters or there's throwaway cutters. The throwaway cutters are designed, once they lose their edge, uh, they start to doll up then you remove them, you throw them away, and you replace it with a new one. A very quick setup, very quick process, um, and what that does, it saves you from sending that tool out for sharpening. The turnover cutters, um, we use them a lot on uh, where we're doing square edge cutting, uh, molders, planers, joiners, um, and they often will have up to four different cutting edges on the same knife. So as that tool gets dull, you, you loosen it, you rotate it, and then reinstall it, and it's like you have a brand new cutter head again. It is fast and easy. If we could maybe just back that up just a second there, Lori. Uh, fast and easy uh, to change and no cost for sharpening and downtime. Thin carbide chips can be used since they don't have to be brazed onto the cutter. So those chips are only, oh, about one and a half to two millimeters in thickness. Uh, but they do have to be handled carefully uh, to make sure that they don't get chipped in the installation process. Uh, ceramic tooling um, is not really something that we use much in the wood industry. Uh, it's used for metal work uh, with some success where there is high speed, high rim speeds. Uh, not really something that I'm familiar with so I'm just going to leave that and let the slide explain itself. But that could be an area of, of improvement down the road for us as well. Uh, lasers are quite common in our industry today, uh, used a lot for um, engraving, veneers, uh, some solid for uh, um, cutting out uh, diagrams and pictures and stuff in, in wood surfaces. Uh, extremely accurate, they get a thin kerf and extremely fast. It does char the edges, however that does add some appeal for some people. And some may use a gas to prevent burning, but the addition of that can be quite expensive. 
um, where you see laser cutting, um, we actually had a laser cutter in the school um, last uh, last semester. We had an, an apprentice that uh, brought in a homemade laser tool and um, did some engraving with it. Actually, it was pretty slick. Didn't have all the safety bells and whistles on it, but uh, it was kind of neat to see that she did this built this thing at home. Anyway. Um, Water jets have been around for quite a number of years. Water and wood don't necessarily mix, so it's not an ideal tool to be using with wood. Take a look at the water pressures there. They're using that for cutting uh, uh, tin and steel. Up to 50,000 PSI. Uh, that's phenomenal as far as pressure. Uh, not currently used in the wood industry, but tests are being done. And uh, finally, we have sandblasting. Uh, using a template and then blasting the wood away with a sandblaster. Uh, I've used a lot in softwoods, not so much in hardwoods. Uh, you'll see them around uh, being used for signs. Uh, golf course, you often see them on signs at a golf course. Uh, farm gate signs um, where they've actually sandblasted out uh, the excess wood and it leaves kind of a unique finish. Uh, very attractive when it's done but uh, it still has to have some type of a finish applied to it to preserve the wood. And does that wrap it up there? Is there another one beyond that? That's it. So we're, uh, we're going to move on to the next topic then on our subjects.